Welcome back to Always Digest. Now, this week uh, I came across a very nice uh, a Twitter handle. Uh, it's called stats underscore Kenya. And it goes through you know, showing different graphs and charts related to Kenya uh, economy, population, and everything that ha happens within uh, the country. So there was one particular graph uh, that caught my attention. It's about nightlight. So how much of nightlife, night lights are there <clears throat> in a particular uh, county or city. So there's this very nice graph put out there showing that, of course, Nairobi is going to lead, followed by uh, Nakuru and Kiambu, so on uh, and so forth. But there was a second graph uh, that was on this Twitter handle that showed uh, nightlight vis-a-vis -vis GDP for each county. And uh, there was a very uh, interesting uh, correlation where if the nightlight is high, then GDP is high. If it's low, also GDP is uh, low. Now, then I started thinking about it, you know, okay, it makes sense. You know, if you go to, unless it's a place like Masai Mara, which still makes money when there are no lights, but generally more lights means more industries, more commercial properties, more residential areas. And for that, they enhance more uh, human activities, uh, which translate into income and generation of uh, wealth, <clears throat> which, is, which is actually uh, great. And a while back, I had come across a nightlight uh, image graph chart, satellite image <clears throat> of North Korea versus South Korea, where South Korea is dense with the light, and then South Korea is like, boop, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's, it's like wilderness in that. And then definitely there's now the disparity between the economics between South Korea and North uh, Korea. But while I was you know, going through this, there's this particular tweet describing the difference between South Korea and North Korea, where the tweet is like, uh, Strava workout density is the best predictor of middle income status in a country or in a region. And I'm like, whoa, this, this could be interesting. Just in any case you don't know about Strava, uh, Strava is a fitness app that helps you track your activities. If you're running, if you're cycling, if you're snowboarding, if you're doing workouts, it helps you do that. And it's also a social media where you can share with your friends and people who follow you on your workout um, activities. Now, when you undertake an outdoor activity like running and cycling, then it traces uh, you know, your path on your cycling path or your, your running path. So the workout density can show, uh, if you take an area, let's say CBD in Nairobi, or Parklands, Westlands, you can tell how many people cycle here and people run out here. And then that it's called the workout uh, density for a particular area. So well, this tweet said, workout density is a very good predictor of middle class. So I started thinking about this. And I was like, okay, this, this sounds quite interesting. Now, it took me back to uh, an article I, I read a few years back where someone who was looking at workout density accidentally stumbled on a secret US Army base in Afghanistan. So it's an area where doesn't seem to be much there, but according to the workout map, there's a very big number of, of, of people running uh, there. And these are soldiers who wake up in the morning, they put the Strava on and, and, and they run. Then I was like, okay, let me dig more into this Strava data and what it is able to, to, to tell us. And I happened upon another further interesting uh, article, which was about uh, Strava workout density map in Baltimore, Maryland in the US. The basis of the article was that because Baltimore is one of the most violent cities in the U.S. and you know, drug trafficking is very you know, entrenched in the, in the city. And if you watch The Wire, you'll understand all the Baltimore's problem and gunfighting, you know, gang wars, and, and, and etc. But now looking at the Strava map, uh, workout density, you can easily tell where gang violence is. And the best way to tell that was looking at where people are avoiding to run. Okay, so if you check, if you go Strava, global heat map, choose a particular city, and then you have the option of choosing cycling or running. If you choose running, you can tell where people are avoiding to run. And correctly, like in Baltimore, it's where there were gang fights, territorial wars uh, in that. 
And I thought to myself, okay, that's so interesting. Then another stat that I came about was what's the demographics of a typical Strava user. So according to the data that I found online, a typical Strava user is a middle-aged male person and comes from middle class. Okay, the middle class bit, I added a little bit, but it says a typical male, but if you put that into Africa, it's said to be a male person who is um, middle-aged. And I was like, okay, maybe we need to run this in uh, Nairobi and see what you're likely to get. Typically in Nairobi, you will find that, you know, areas like Kibera, Dendora, there's much less running. Just generally slum areas for very obvious reason. There's no running infrastructure. There are no side roads to run. And second of all, people are too busy trying to look for money and they hence don't have the time to, to run. And so running tends to be a middle income thing. So I found this while I was zooming in and out through it. I found this is Nyayo Estate in Embakasi. It's a gated community uh, with apartments there. I think this is the most dense workout for, for running I've ever found. It, it makes sense. This is the area where people can run within their uh, gated community and that tells you the very good middle income-ish people who live there, the nice apartments and so on. I'm like, ah, okay, this is quite uh, interesting. So like, then what else can I look at? So my mind went back to the American army base uh, example that I found. Uh, on this secret army base. Then I was like, okay, it makes sense. Army folks want to stay fit and healthy and you know, running in the morning, the evening makes much more sense. So like, let me see you know, what Strava activities around uh, the military bar barracks that we have mostly in Nairobi. So zoomed in, went to uh, Moy uh, Air Base Barrack. Then I was like, okay, it's, it's quite interesting. There's, there's very good activity, people running around, people running within the whole uh within the, the the periphery of the of of the barracks like okay let's check another barracks so let's say kahawa barracks and i was like okay it's also interesting now when i checked then i was like let me check langata barracks and i was like hmm it's much more less activity than the other two barracks i just checked and my man was like why would that be so there's like maybe it's not the soldiers running it could be their family who are there or the friends who visit them. I'm like, no, but that would be, or, or perhaps there are less personnel in that area. So I zoomed into the Embakasi barracks belonging to the Kenya Air Force. I was like, oh, now this is even much less activity. So the first thing is like, okay, maybe these two barracks have less personnel, which means less people running, unless there could be another explanation uh, to it. And I was like, okay, now this is, this is, this is quite interesting. Then something popped into my mind. How about I compare the military with the police, right? At least where there is a formidable pro, pro, a police barrack. And the best police barrack are the comparables are the GSU, the General Service Unit. So I zoomed in, I checked, what's the travel activity at the at GSU headquarters in Dwaraka? Guess what? Nothing. Almost no one runs <laughs> there. And I check both sides. There is the side where you have the most of the residential areas on one side of Thicker Road, and then you cross over, that's where you tend to have the offices and the administrative bit. Nothing. I was like, who? This is an error or something. That's like, okay, there's another GSU training school in Embakasi where they share with the AP camp. So zoom again into that area. Inside the barrack, they don't seem to be active. There's like a there's a football pitch here, which perhaps is where things happen, but the rest of the area there's no activity. And generally, as a running thing, people tend to run around their buildings, like the other examples. But there isn't. Then I was like, okay, let's do Kiganja Training School. Let's go to Kiganja. Nothing. No Strava running <laughs> uh, activity. I'm like, okay. Perhaps let's go outside Nairobi. So I checked Mutongwe ba Navy Base in Mombasa. There seems to be a very healthy running activity within Mutongwe Base. I was like, okay, now I'm getting more data points. What can we infer out of this? Now let's go back to the definition of a typical Strava person. Middle-aged, middle class, 
and mill, then we could say that army, <laughs> army folks are more middle class than the police. Yeah? And, you know, definitely you could tell, you know, if we use that example, you could now say that army folks are paid more <laughs> than the police. That, because now you're not seeing any strava activity in the, in the barracks. There could be other reasons, like, you know, getting fit, and we can say the army has to be always be fit. Perhaps the police, after training, apart from a few units, there's no activity on none of them. Do that. Now, Strava is telling us a lot, a lot and, and, and ambitions, and, and so on and so forth. So, does Strava tell the status of middle class? I think so. And the difference between the army folks and the police is one of the best examples of where uh, almost similar professions, one paid slightly higher than the other. My wager is that the army uh, or the, mil the, the KDF is higher than the Kenya police. So next time you go to look for a place to stay, if you'd like to stay in a middle income place, check out Strava, the heat map. Until next week, like, subscribe. Any Buddha, after Kuochiva, always subscribe. Up. Baruja subscribe. Hey, and I have more videos here.